and welcome to your late April edition of No Prize Podcast. I am the Professor Bud Young, and with me is Johnny the Machine News. How are you, Johnny? I'm pointing the wrong way. Johnny the Machine News. <laughs> I am very well. Very, very well. NFL schedule's out in a month's time. Yeah. The Go draft on. is uh, this week. Yeah. Oh, I love the draft. Yeah. Come on. Kind of getting, your, like... your teams are shaping up, you know? Yeah, we haven't got anyone in the first round now, I don't think. We traded yeah. away. Yeah, well, you but, might looks. It looks like you might get Brady next year. The Dolphins. No, yeah. uh, we don't. Yeah, it's an honor, maybe. <laughs> I think you come in as a player with uh, some incentives. I don't know. Forty-five year old quarterback. Sounds nope. like yeah, no. Forty. I'd be forty-six. Will we be forty-six? Oh, it'd be ninety-six. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Um, so, well, we've got a lot to talk about today. What's um? What's your take on um? The Thor trailer that uh, dropped this week. Wow. Well, the Thor trailer. Well, a little bit of history. Mrs. Mrs. Machine, Mrs. H, she has a bit of a Hemsworth thing going on. So, uh... Uh, so, so, um, the uh, she liked the she liked the trailer. I thought the trailer was was really fun. See Thor get back into his fighting shape a little bit. Mm. I love the uh, the banter between. Um, Star Lord giving it the, the look of the yes. people you love, and he sort of like sneaks his face. Yeah. In. I thought that was it's absolutely cute. well, yeah, well done. Yeah, I thought that was brilliant. So I like, I like the kind of jealousy, stroke, animosity, one woman option, one yeah. man up, one man up, whatever it's called. However, you say it, one, 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 man up, up. one upmanship, yeah, there you go. Thank you. There go. I like that element between their relationship, and of course, great song to kick off. Love big G, G and R to to go from that but the, the highlight has to be for like the last 10 seconds right oh yeah I mean, how, Foster. How, does she, how good does she look as thor she looks good i've seen some back but some backstage pictures right yeah but she's absolutely jacked she looks bigger than hemsworth i think a little bit maybe you know so um so of course we had to have the whole discussion my, my wife was like well how'd she get the hammer I was like, well, you know, in fear itself, God does something that makes him unworthy of the hammer, and then Jane does something that makes her worthy, and that's how she gets the hammer. That's that's pretty much. The, it's not it's not a state secret when it comes yeah. to how you how you get your hands on the hammer, right? Yeah. Um, and she also oh, will show that. I said, you know what? I doubt it. I doubt. I doubt we'll get a lot of fear itself in there. But um, I've heard from uh, from your internet that there's a lot of a lot more unscripted pieces in this and so you know what i think it's going to be one of those movies that you'll watch it the first time like i watched thor 3 the first time right like, what a pile of crap this is <laughs> but then on like second and third viewings i'm like oh yeah yeah i get it yeah yeah you know so i think i think you've really got to manage your expectations going into the movie I think it's definitely going to be a movie you're going to have to watch at least twice. One to get out of the hall. Wow, it's a new movie, and, and two to actually sit down and watch it. So, so yeah. one other thing I want to bring up about that, and maybe get your opinion on, is the uh, uh, more controversy that's kind of raised its ugly head, where uh, there was a screenshot posted on Twitter, I think, of yeah. a, um, of a screenshot capture from the from the trailer of Thor and it was it Kirk is his name was sitting uh -huh. standing on that peak with the big body of the of the god in the background and it was an absolute rip off of uh, the artwork from Isad Ribich and the and Thor. yeah yeah I've seen this I've and seen it this. brought up um, it brought up again the uh, creator rights or creative uh, compensation that uh, that people may or may not be taking part of from so uh, you know it, it's an interesting it's an interesting premise isn't it? it's an interesting thought mm -hmm. right but i suppose and the way this kind of works is that and i'm sorry if this is unpopular but just think like let's just think logically all right? sure right an artist signs a contract to produce a piece of work for a company right yep True, the artist owns the original because that's his or her work. But the contract stipulates that the art, once it's published, belongs it to the company. Mm -hmm. Therefore, said company should be able to use that art 
however they like because they've already paid for it the artist has been paid for their work mm. yeah yeah so if you think if you think about it you go to the museum you go and see a fantastic piece of van gogh or van gogh or however you want to pronounce it now <laughs> every time you look upon it nobody pays van gogh any extra. you're going to see i, I know that's a bad example because he's dead give me a, a modern day artist you know um banksy in the uk you go to the go. museum yeah you go and see a banksy piece in the museum you paid your entry fee to go to see the museum right you don't then go and say oh banksy cheers mate there, there you go there's another tenant because i've looked at your picture do you well banksy you might you might go see a banksy picture and uh well, and fair, get, it, anyway. get it shredded in your front of your eyes <laughs> yeah, yeah but but I, I suppose i suppose if the guy gets the credit at the end of the movie you know when the credits come up and it does that with special thanks to right and you get mentioned there your work has been recognized as being important to the creation of that movie picture right how I many i mean otherwise otherwise rabbit should need to get paid mm -hmm. kirby estate would need to get paid stan lee would need to get paid in fact, anybody who's worked with Thor between point A and now would need to get paid. Because yeah. anybody could turn around and say, well, actually, you know what? You know, I mean, the, the writers of Lady Thor would need to get paid. Because <laughs> without without them writing Lady Jane Foster as Thor, this movie ain't got a heroine. Right. Yeah, right. So, well, so, so where do you draw the line? Where, where do you say, right, enough's enough? I think, you know... I do kind of fall on, like, I definitely see the, you know, creator work for hire type. You created this, we paid you for that. Now we own it. We can do with it what we want. But um, I was listening to, and I, I'm kind of trying to, I want to give uh, credit to the, to the guy that tweeted it. Uh, so Kurt Busey, I think right. was, uh, was, was, I guess, ranting about it earlier this week. And I don't want to call it a rant, but he was trying to say. He makes a lot of sense. Kurt. He makes a lot of great points, but um when you when he's talking about uh, that particular rip, that's what we're still talking about. And I don't want to call it a rip; it's just a recreation, right? So, um, yeah. it's a recreation of that artwork, almost almost exactly. Um, but you know, Kurt Busiek was saying he guarantees that the person that drew up the storyboard or the person that created the actual CGI artwork that is in the movie got paid way more than Asad Rivich did to create that he also mentions you know and then when they they the the scene in a, in a uh, iron man where the the armor pod comes out and, mm. and it attaches itself to him while he's falling mm. that that was a recreation of uh of when busiek was writing iron man with um and i i, I apologize but i forget the artist um but that they they envisioned that and created it on the page so that the people that worked on the movie could recreate that mm. onto, onto the screen. And he guarantees everybody that worked on the movie got paid way, way more than they did. And they basically created the shot, right? But then, I mean, you know what? And I, I get that. I understand that wholeheartedly. But where's, where's the line? Where, where's the line? Right. I mean, so you watched the recent Batman movie. It's like, yes. oh, look, Batman's... He's, he's fired a, he's fired a harpoon through somebody and he's pulled him backwards and he's got him that's in batman 89. so does tim burton get paid batman the animated series used that a lot the grappling yeah. punch where he flies up batman that was in batman begins so does christopher nolan get paid where does where, it stop? yeah where does the these, line get drawn i get it these, these are like these are icons that have been around for decades mm -hmm right and no disrespect to ribich or anybody who's created a panel of work or a body of work that has then been uh utilized for a movie in some points right right but if you want to get paid like the movies work in the movies there you go yeah i mean, okay. I, I mean that I, every time i read something about the batman or even batman begins it's like oh yeah we really like the long halloween it's based on year one there's this there's that yeah I've, no way frank miller's or david muscaselli has got any money yeah. off of the batman no, yeah. no way no way and you can look at the movie and say oh well you know 
oh look, Batman and Catwoman are stood on a on a rooftop together. Yeah. Let's pay Jim Lee some money. No. Well, that's it. You know, I I always come back to um, watching uh, Spider Man. Yeah. And you see you see uh, him jumping around, and you're like, oh, that's a classic Bagley pose. Do yeah. you throw Bagley a few bucks? But that's but those are the things that you know. I think um, while these artists become famous for the specific poses or specific scenes, uh -huh. um, that what they are meant to be, do when recreated in the movies is make you think of that, you know. And it does. It does yeah. every time. In the yeah. the, um, the Tom McGuire bit where he pulls the paws and he's his, his knees above his head and stuff you're thinking right ah, yeah. is mcfarlane getting any money for that nope no so, is it right that mcfarlane should be getting any money for that yeah it's right he should be because he created something for marvel and marvel and and now come uh, are putting the movie out it's like if if somebody makes a spawn movie and it's based on mcfarlane's artwork then yeah mcfarlane should get paid left right and center Mm. Well, that's because he gets paid. Do you, all right, here's another one then. So Greg Capullo worked on Spawn. Yeah. When McFat, right? So if they do a, a Spawn movie, and you can see that it's a Capullo who was at the time pulling the McFarlane anyway, does Capullo get paid, not McFarlane, even though McFarlane owns the character? And, or, or at that point, do you think maybe both of them should get paid? <sighs> Right, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, so yeah, you're right. Where does it stop? So, uh, all right. So let's table that discussion. For, <laughs> for now, we can really, we could, we could take up the whole hour and just talk about uh, about yeah. whether or not we think because because I could come up with a hundred examples where I kind of think. Oh, here comes Lucas. Um, mm. I can think of a hundred different things that we we could talk about where I think creators should have gotten paid. Yeah. But also think of a hundred different things as well you know maybe your contribution wasn't as much as someone else's right so um, and again that that itself is a, that itself is is a huge huge debating point how do you, you watch wolverine for example or the x-men movies how much how much credit do you give len wen the creator right over, over chris claremont or john Byrne, or frank miller or anybody who actually built that character out because when Len Wen did it, it was like a, an angry guy with claws. That was it. Right, for sure. <laughs> well, let's take a moment and invite uh, our third guy in to the booth. Let's welcome Lucas. How Lucas! Are you, Lucas? Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm sorry. I was uh, <laughs> late trying to get a knot out of my hair. Yeah, I have that, <laughs> I have that problem all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know, freaking it's this new shampoo I've been using. So uh Did, we're gonna uh, guess where the knot is. No. <laughs> uh, I, 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 uh, let's keep it uh, all audience friendly. <laughs> where the knot is. <laughs> Lucas, we're just about to jump into uh the discussion for Moon Knight. I don't know if you've Ooh. uh if you've caught up on uh, on Moon Knight, but um Disney Plus, we're on that we're up to episode four, and um i if you've seen it, um I'm of the opinion that it's kind of losing me through the end of the fourth episode. And uh, now I'm thinking I, at first I thought six episodes wasn't enough. Now I think maybe let's wrap it up. Yeah. Well, you know, so I haven't, I've been trying to, to trying to watch it, um, but I can give you the feedback that other people have been giving about Moon Knight and they're saying, man, Marvel is losing it. Marvel needs to freaking do something. Um, you know, the momentum that Marvel had has been lost. Um, and uh, now some people are wondering whether, you know, DC is starting to freaking catch up to him now. Oh, um, I'm still not worried about that. Yeah. Um, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 yeah, I mean, it's a weird dynamic, right? It's, this is the outer freaking Marvel stuff. This is not, hey, good guy on the block freaking trying to save the damsel in distress this is outer cosmic stuff um you know or you know this is inner inner stuff that people aren't used to when it comes to the superhero stuff um and from what i've heard and because i just talked to some of the uh the other community last night and they're like they're not feeling it right now they think that marvel is starting to lose momentum so they gotta do something um yeah. so i kind i I kind of agree with Lucas on this one, to be honest. I think uh, I think Doctor Strange and Thor 
can't happen soon enough for Marvel to get back. I it's think all so. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, us nerds and geeks, we all love a bit of Shang-Chi. We don't mind the Eternals. Moon Knight, everyone either loves them or hates them. You talk to Joe Public and none of these characters exist. Right? So it's really hard to to sort of to sort of hang your cinematic universe or even your TV universe on characters that nobody cares about. That's why Netflix started with Daredevil. Mm. Right? Daredevil is a is a brand everyone recognizes, Daredevil. Mainly because they're watching it and think, God, I hope it's not as bad as those two movies, which is fine, right? right? But it's a recognized brand. You talk to anybody, anybody about the Eternals, and they're like, What? So, mm. for Marvel, I agree with Lucas on this. They need to bring up, they need to get the heavy hitters, they need to bring the Thors and the Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah, no one gives a rat's ass about Moon Knight. Well, yeah, I, 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 would, I would disagree on the Thor, right? Because remember, the, the first thing that people started pulling is thor dark world right so they got to be careful with that because um yeah you know, it was the well, first one the first Thor movie is is pretty much tickety boo bang on uh I, I don't know i mean a lot of people they didn't like that one they they thor really didn't start catching on to ragnarok that's when people were like oh okay we see the vision and they were like yeah we like we like it Thor, yeah yeah um but that's it's 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 easy for people to get not everybody liked thor in the beginning Right, and, or until even his dynamic story with the Avengers, and people were like, "Okay, this is this is great. We can, we can see that and everything." Um, and you gotta remember who he who he is in this whole freaking big Marvel picture. He is a cosmic god, and I think that's where that what pe- that's where people are missing out, man. Freaking like, uh, I already have a complicated thing with God already, so I don't really feel like seeing seeing this guy on the you know on the freaking screen right now. Now they're they're fine with seeing buffoons, right? You, if you're a freaking cosmic god, your 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 absence in my life is is explained by cosmic buffoonery because you're a freaking drunk, freaking dumbass, freaking just making stupid mistakes. People freaking people get that because that's why people, you know, that's why the freaking Greeks love freaking Zeus so much, right? That's why they love Dionysus and they love we even to this day they they puck, right? Because we get it, right? Gods are spiteful. They're awesome. They're they're sexy and they're freaking and they make freaking bad mistakes. And we get that, right? Because gods are supposed to be us and we're supposed to be gods, right? But if we don't see that in freaking Marvel movies, right? And we just say, oh, there's he's freaking got all the power of. We're like, okay, he had all this freaking power. Where was he when this happened? And the people start to go. And that's that's one of the questions that people were asking about turtles. Okay, they're all they're just all powerful stuff. What happened? Where were they? They were in this whole big fight with with Thanos. So, maybe, well, maybe they got snapped. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think I think um, I think Marvel needs to definitely bring the more um, commercially recognized characters back into the fold. I agree. I agree. I just want to say uh, one more thing about Moon Knight before we move on. I was really super excited at the at the idea of this a Disney Plus Moon Knight series where we could like really kind of explore um, the the mental aspects of a hero versus a secret identity versus multiple secret identities and talk about maybe mental illness and the st- kind of story twists and maybe the so it's, I think the story was like ripe for for. Uh, for translation onto Mm -hmm. the screen. And I just think that maybe it was a little, maybe they didn't do enough maybe, or maybe like, I I think, I think they concentrated more on a supernatural type story rather than maybe the more intimate story of this guy is a little bit nutso and maybe kind of translate it that way. And go ahead, Johnny. Your points were absolutely well made. And it it actually segues perfectly into Lucas's. You know, if Moonlight's adv- advertised as a as an exposition or a, a discussion about mental health and uh, personality disorders, then that's fine. But <clears throat> to keep the expectant crowd happy, mm. you've got to throw the superhero stuff in, and that's where there's like a little bit of a disconnect, and this, that's where it gets loses its balance a little bit for me. Um, the mental health aspect, absolutely fine. What I actually think is that 
And I've already seen the first episode. I think Moon Knight's going to be a, a show that you'd be better served watching it as a whole binge session rather than having to waste. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> for me, I think the mental health aspect is a bit of, for the writers of the show, it's a bit of a get out of jail free card. It's like, oh, we've run, our, run, we've run ourselves into the corner. What should we do? I know. Give them another personality. Let's let's change the room. Let's give him another one. We don't have to explain it. Let's just give him another one. Because you know what? He's crazy. And you're like, um, actually, I'm I'm paying for this. So therefore, I'd like some sort of conclusion, please. Thank you. Right. Well, I like to bring up the uh, the the episode four, which you guys didn't see, where he's actually where he wakes up in the mental hospital. And uh, I would like I would have loved, and I would have liked to see Marvel spare no expense, is if he woke up and in the in the in the insane asylum we saw like chris hemsworth <laughs> and tom hiddleston yeah. and yeah some of those other characters where you're like oh th these are the other superheroes and then maybe yeah. they're all crazy <laughs> you know yeah. like, that, so, that would have been cool. that would have been cool that would have been a cool shot right yeah like, no however there'd be some guy complaining that they created that in a comic book and therefore one's paying for it i've never seen that in a comic <laughs> book honestly <laughs> i thought that would have been cool <laughs> so all right any last words on moon Knight before maybe we take a little break and then come back and talk comics not for me good all night right. moon night <laughs> <laughs> good night moon good night moon night all right <laughs> let's uh let's take an ad and then we will be right back Make sure to check out Crisis in the Toyverse and all of our other podcasts on Undercover Capes Podcast Network. Um, but for right now, let's jump into this week's comic books. And it was a very kind of short week. I think what we get, like seven or eight books? <coughs> seven. Right. Seven, I think it was. Seven. So let's um, let's jump into, let's talk about Avengers first and kind of get that off uh, off my chest. Oh, um, really? <laughs> that doesn't pause well. No, okay, so no, this this, this book, I, I and I, I guess I'm famous now for kind of panning the Avengers because I love this book so much, and I've been such a, um, uh, do I want to say a detractor on Jason uh, Aaron's run of Avengers? <clears throat> no. um, this, this book really kind of is more of the same, even though we kind of get the entire team in this book, or such as it's currently constituted. But here we see Black Panther leaving the Avengers and um, and I guess driving um, Nighthawk uh, into replacing him on the team. Um, and we have a kind of a an, kind of an int intimate uh, introductory uh, explanation to Nighthawk. This is this story is told from his point of view. Um, we're kind of caught up on what happened during Heroes Reborn and. Um, the fact that he found out that that the rest of the squad and Supreme are basically all LMDs and they're not real. They're all androids or whatever you want to call them. And he's just waiting to, uh, I guess, stop working as far as uh, as far as that goes. He's going to deteriorate. But until then, he's going to join the Avengers and fight against Mephisto. Um, and that's that's the, actually the big bad. And Mephisto has really kind of been... Uh, I guess lurking. Um, mm. I, I want to say behind the scenes, but he really hasn't been behind the scenes, right? Um, in this entire run, and um, and I think this is probably going to culminate with some kind of uh, you know the billion years Avengers or whatever we're calling them, um, because he's he's back there too, and now he's here, uh, and we show, we see that he's uh, 
not I do I do want to say possessed, but he's got the uh, serpent society worshiping him and doing his work. Um, and the reason, actually, this is the reason why I wanted to review the book is because the Serpent Society has been my favorite villain team for like 30 something years. And they're just not, I think they're underutilized. And, um, well, they're not the wrecking crew. They're, well, <laughs> no, they're definitely not the wrecking crew. Um, but here, uh, they, they, be, they take center stage here, but it's not like, um, I don't even think they told, said any of their their names. They all look cool, but then you, you'd kind of like, who are these people? Um, and the only way you'll know these guys is if you ever followed Captain America, uh, Mark Rumwald's Captain America run. Um, but there are some some serpent characters in here that I'm just like, did they just give someone a new costume and I don't know who they are? Are they supposed to be? So I think that was a little bit of a drop. They should have had like maybe little name tags or something on them so that you could keep track. Um, but there is a good uh, screenshot or a good panel here of uh, of the main Avengers. I guess that the, the core group, Cap, mm -hmm. Iron Man, Thor, and Captain Marvel. Um, and then you get the, uh, the at the at the finale where they induct Nighthawk into the Avengers. They actually do one of those Justice League type panel around the table kind of symbols. Um, and all the uh, all the newer members, such as Starbrand and Namor and Blade and Valkyrie and Phoenix, so this is a very different looking team than it just just a few months ago, which uh, I've always been a fan of the Avengers shifting up their lineup, but never so like uh, really like usually the 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 changes are a bit organic. Here it just mm. seems like everybody slammed into uh, all of a sudden their Avengers. And, um, you know, with Phoenix and Starbrand on the team, plus Thor and Captain Marvel, this is kind of a pretty cosmic, cosmically powered level team. Because um, <clears throat> it's getting, getting ready to go up against the there BC, are... BC Avengers and we've got Mephisto coming down the pipe. You know, yeah. These guys ain't stopping any uh, robberies anytime soon. I, the, the only thing that I can really hope is that this is leading up to perhaps maybe Jason Aaron's last Avengers story. I hope. It, oh, I hope it comes Jesus. soon. I mean, look, <laughs> at the, look at the tag on the look, look on the tag on the cover. This is a prelude to A to, versus right. X versus E. So, you know, you're going to have to have some heavy hitters to go to get into that. This is true. This is true. Uh, but anyway, let's. So I I, I neglected to uh, to to blame the creators here. So uh, right, written by Jason Aaron with art by Javier Garon. Uh, Colors, David Curiel. Letters, VCs, Corey Pettit. Um, and let's blame the editors, uh, Martin Biro, Annalise Pisa, and Tom Brevoort, who has been editing Avengers for uh, uh, literally forever. Um, what did you guys think about this book? May I, may I say something? May I say? You, you may. I, I, you I, may. I, think, I think you need to give this book some, some applause. I think this book has managed to do something that DC have been trying to do for the last 18 months. And Which failed. is? spectacularly at well they've created a black batman it's great oh okay that yeah. hawks batman isn't he yeah isn't he, the, he absolutely he? is yes yeah and I agree with you. you guys african-american so well done avengers you've created the black batman well done in heroes reborn he was actually more batman than batman so with, you, with know. A, you know the 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 the, the bat cave or the nighthawk cave and yeah yeah the, 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 the nighthawk like, mobile and yeah. It's absolutely. I'm, I think it's amazing. Well done. And it didn't it didn't need to bring up like a character that's, you know, made two panel appearances from the seventies. I think the cover's fantastic. Um, I and I'm a huge Serpent Society fan. What do you guys What do you guys think about the Serpent Society? Where's Did Diamond you back? Bring Diamond back back. <laughs> that Diamond back back. Where's bring Diamond back? back? Bring it back. back. Yeah. yeah. I was looking so, forward to some Cape Diamond back love, but no. No. So uh -huh. yeah, so so I would ask, you know, what is the purpose of this whole serpent society other than attaching them to Manifesto, right? So I think that's it. <laughs> you know, so the so I, I saw the the one little headshot of um, or it's not like a headshot, but it's like a, the platform shot where you said the different symbols of the superheroes and everything. Yeah, they need to have something similar when it comes to Manifesto. Like, hey, there's these serpents then there's these dogs over here then these some spiders and and yada 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 and so that we can get our, in our minds the elements that are going against each other 
um, and that would tie the tide, right? Because uh, our, you know, if we're getting a war that's building up, and Mephisto is one general, and then we got a general on the other side, I would like to to get some knowledge of the, the elements that are building up. And I know it's not just a freaking serpents. What happened to the serpent crown? Right, this that was a big thing that was happening just a year ago, right? Where yeah. they went to the heart of uh, the land of Khazar and the, and the heart of Wakanda uh, to go searching for this thing. Why isn't this a big element of the story? No, maybe it will be just, coming with, up because this is just a setup, man. This is just, you're not going to get the the bells and the whistles. I mean, the double spread page of Mephisto towards the end of the book looks great. But it is. It's, this is just a setup. This is just. This is a filler introduction. Um, it's done well for what it is, but we're not going to get these answers. You make some great points, Lucas, but we're not going to get answers to those. You know, down the line, they might have ramifications, of course. But the main thrust of the book is, we need to bring Nighthawk into the fold, and we need some disposable villains we can use. Is this? Is this? Is this beginning of DC becoming? Or Marvel becoming DC because <gasps> look, you got you finally they got rid of Black Panther, right? Because I've always said this: like if you're having a society that's supposed to be ahead or fighting on behalf of American values using America American infrastructure, you don't need an African prince who is the head of a state of a freaking another nation doing that. Um, but then it makes sense to that okay, we have this billionaire. Who's head of? A, who's not necessarily not yet because he just joined, right? But he's going to be sitting at the table with these other superheroes. What's that? That's fucking Justice League. Hmm. Iron Man's it's literally been, fucking Justice League. Iron Man's always been the rich billionaire that's been sitting at the table. It's not but that's not. But that's not Tony Stark. Tony Gotta remember, that's me. we're not. That's not the real Tony Stark. <laughs> that's a okay. clone. People forget that. Yeah. And we don't even know if that's the real clone yet. That's not even the original clone that we've been dealing with. Remember, two years ago, or two, three years ago, he died. And then they brought him back, and then he was a clone or like a hologram with embodied. And then, once again, he just got kidnapped by the, the assessor, the dude that kidnapped Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. And this is like Tony, according to the assessor, this is like Tony Stark point three point. 31 or something like that uh, yeah i think but i i think that uh to the average fan he's tony stark you know i don't think they're i don't and, and and you know what i think that's i think that that story is maybe maybe they come back and retell it at some point a few years from now but for right now i think that it's Tony Stark. Everybody thinks it's Tony Stark, and for Marvel's intents and purposes, it's Tony Stark. And just for the, I mean, just to sort of like throw on DC a bone here, because obviously I like DC books as well. Um, Death of Justice League is just around the corner, so sooner or later you're going to get no Justice League. So right. there you go. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> so um, the and the one thing that I want to thank, I guess maybe thank Jason Aaron for. So I don't want to totally throw them under the bus and I, I love i love just thor run so um it's just my my personal thoughts on avengers um but he explained something to mephisto that's been bugging me for years is that um everybody perceives mephisto differently and where um nighthawk perceives him as a dog and and most people like i i consider mephisto the the, the john basima version of mephisto but John Romita Jr. drew him very demonic-like, or Todd McFarlane drew him very demon-like, more like uh, more like the the demon in uh, Spawn. Um, so for that, thank you for explaining that because I like they switched him so much it it drove me nuts. But um, that's explained now that everybody perceives him differently, and I love that double spread, the double page spread. Where it's like a, a thousand different Mephistos mm, with basically the interpretation. So, all right. So, um, I will stop bitching about the Avengers for now. Let's jump into uh, Johnny. Talk to me about Doctor Strange Nexus of Nightmare. Number one. All right. That's Captain America. <laughs> right. So, Doctor Strange Nexus of Nightmares. Number one, one shot. See, it seems you can't keep a good doctor down. And if regards to the fact he's got his, he's now out of his own book and Clay is doing a great job, you know, as always, we're going to keep going on. 
for me, this is one of those books that screams old timers at you because you've got um, a writer who has mm -hmm. been around the block a fair few times. And I think this adds to Marvel's own recognition that there is something uh, left in the idea of the older arcs. You know, we've got Symbiote Spider Man, you've got the Silver Surfer book with Thanos, um, both set in the past. Um, this set in the past because obviously Strange isn't around. So it's written by Ralph Macchio, art by Ibrahim Mustafa. If you want to hear about an interview with uh, Ibrahim, check out Outside the Panels where he talks about his own indie book. Um, Colors by Niraj Menon, letters by VCs Kari Pettit. I quite like this book because it was, it is a little bit old school. The art works really well. The only problem with it being old school is that it's written in an old school style. It's very so, wordy. Well, it's not only just wordy, it's very explainy as if you're an idiot. Mm. And it's like, you know what? I'm old enough to remember when Doctor Strange was around. You know, I'm old enough. I've read Doctor Strange before. I know his, his, his deal. I don't need everything explaining to me. This book isn't aimed at me as great as the art and the colours are, this book is aimed at the people who are going to be going to see a certain movie in a few weeks' time. Yep. And it's written in such a way as it's kind of just explaining things over. And over. It's like that Wolverine book we looked at not so long ago. Do you remember? And they explained yep. three different times how his bones are made of adamantium and can't be broken. Oh, well, and you so, get the you get the uh, the retelling of the origin in here too. So yeah, and it's you know, like, it's like a one stop shop. Yeah, so I understand why it's around. The art looks gorgeous. Ibrahim does a fantastic job with the art. The colors look great. Uh, story wise, dude, it deserves to be back in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I agree with you. I kind of thought it was it was uh, very of its time, right? So. Um, First of all, shout out to uh, the Karate Kid doing uh, double duty on uh, on writing writing a Doctor Strange book plus acting in the you know <laughs> Cobra, Cobra Kai. Um, that's a joke, by the way, Ralph Macchio. But I just, two I, different I, two I, different people, gentlemen. I'm, 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 laugh, I'm laughing on the inside. <laughs> um, yeah, but I thought it was a good story. Um, it it's seems a, like it was something. Story. It's, it's simple very story. simple, but it also seems like I've read this before. Yeah, like Nightfall, I've read Baron yeah. Mordo trying to uh, let the demons or the mystic mystic villains into this dimension to rule. You know, and the, and Nightmare could have been Dormammu, it could have been Shumagorath, it could have been any multiple number of uh, Doctor Strange demon demonic villains, um, with Baron Mordo acting as the uh, the conduit to. Uh, to, to the dimension and they you know they throw the dark hold in here good mcguffin the dark hold i imagine is going to be around in dr strange uh you know multiverse of madness right so it kind of gives you a primer for the movie it's it, you know you, you said you've read it before when i read this book the first time i could I switch out and i know i've got my dc head on so apologies but i could switch everybody out it's like oh look you know, they've released the inmates of Arkham to wear down Batman so Bane can take down Batman. Yeah. This is this is nightfall. Ironically in a nightmare, but you know. Yeah. Lucas, <laughs> what did you think? You know, I I agree with you guys full heartedly, man. That's I like what they did with this. They had a very defined purpose. Look, we got a freaking movie that's coming out. We need to freaking explain um who this guy is just a little bit. Because um, we're not going to expect everybody to freaking go back. So, hey, here's this guy. This is what he freaking does. This is where he comes from. Um, hey, and let's, for a good measure, let's throw in uh, the Darkhold, right? And then let's also throw in the the Nexus, right, as, as the thing, right, and explain how it freaking works. Oh, and by the way, let's take a shot at our main opponent, DC, by throwing in... A character that is very like one where they're going to have a TV series, a big TV series coming up that they just happen to figure wrap up, right? Nightmare, who would be Marvel's version of the Sandman, 
freaking so I, I think that was freaking and, and you know I've seen this several times over the last couple of weeks that Marvel taking pot shots at fucking DC uh, for no reason, <laughs> but a it, it, it was kind of sticky. But you know what? It still kind of freaking works. So I, I freaking like this one. It's fine. There you go, short and sweet. Short and sweet. All right, let's. Uh... I get I get the feeling that Lucas doesn't like DC that much though. <laughs> No, no, it's yeah. not that I don't like. It's not that I don't like DC. Is that I'm waiting with. I'm the guy that's waiting with braided breath for DC to get their shit together, right? I've got some would argue. <laughs> some would argue that DC have their stuff together. They're just not doing it the Marvel way. No, yeah. they're 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 <laughs> not doing it. They're they're not doing it at at the good pace of. I'm a speculator that's got money invested in these books, and we want, their, <laughs> you know, we want their shit. You know, and the yeah. truth will out. Yeah, yeah. Look, they it's haven't not about had. DC. Yeah, it's all about look, Lucas. Exactly. <laughs> look, they haven't had a really good speculation comic since uh, Harley Quinn, right? Batman Adventures number twelve. That was the last really good one that they really had. Naomi, um, which is a character that they just had out, which was probably the fastest. Um, comic TV series character that I've ever seen. Um, and she came out, what, maybe three years ago. She already has her own TV series, but it sucks, right? Um, so nobody's freaking aching for that. Um, so so, so we're hoping that some of these other characters in, that DC, once again, gets their stuff together. And, you know, come on, throw us, throw us some bones, guys. You know, I, I, I don't know what's going on, but look, separately, Look, Joker is good. Freaking, you know, Peacemaker is good, but I don't, I don't have thirty thousand dollars in those first appearances to freaking, you know, you know, to, to invest in those freaking comments. I just, just throw me a guy, throw me, throw a guy a bone for. I have three ninety nine a week to spend on some of this stuff. Throw me, throw me a bone. Make some of those freaking valuable. Come on, guys. Come on, Discovery, HBO Max. Come on, let's make it happen. <laughs> All right, let's let's jump into our third review. We're gonna we're gonna look at Captain America number zero, um, which is basically a primer for the two different Captain America series coming out this month. Um, so this is uh, this is a book called Future Proof for writers of Tochi Onyabuchi, Jackson Lenzing, and Colin Kelly, with art by Mattia Tiulis. I should have given this to you just to read, Johnny. Yeah. Uh, letters by VCs Joe Caramagna and covered by Alex Ross. Um, this book basically is just a fight story. It's it's um, Captain America and Captain America versus Arnim Zula. Um, and the I want to say that this was probably I when I looked through this the first time, I actually thought it was Alex Ross on art. Mm. Um, and I actually had to look at the end to see that it was, uh, it was not Alex Ross, but, um, you know, the, the one thing I mean, and I think the artwork is beautiful, but sometimes I kind of feel like painted artwork doesn't really lend itself to the kinetic motion of the characters in the book. And maybe you might disagree with me on this, Johnny, um, cause there are some, some panels that, that really pop. Um, but nope. basically when I look at the artwork, I kind of think it's just static. Uh, there's no motion. I think I, I, there are a couple of panels in there that, that you lose the traction. There's a scene where, uh, Steve Rogers cap is running towards something. And honestly, there's no forward motion. It's just, he stood there the mm. same shot where he's throwing his shield. It's supposed to be that iconic more from the first Avengers scene where he's throwing his shield at the camera. Right. That looks really static. I get where you're coming from. There are some gorgeous set pieces, though. Yes. Um, when the when he's in the rocket and when uh, Sam Cap is outside trying to do his own thing, um, it's a little bit chaotic at places. And it's hard to follow where each one is. It's like have you, one's in the rocket, one's outside the rocket. But if Duak is blasted off, I thought it would damage the engines. What? Mm. Um, so you kind of need to. I think it's one of those books that looks so intimidating because of the artwork you've got to take some time you've got to you've got to give it a, a, a two over you've got to do it at least twice 
So yeah, and the 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 thing the thing I got out of this book mostly really wasn't the story because it is kind of a basic by the numbers story. Uh, you know, it's, there's no surprises in this, but the the writing on it I think was the an attempt to get Sam up to the same level that maybe you might think of Steve as a Captain America. They even have a couple of pages there where they're kind of joking back and forth about uncanny Captain America, astonishing Captain America. That was kind of a little lame-o, but... Um, I, oh, see, I thought that was all right. The thing that I... <laughs> the, oh, in fact, mine, mine wasn't in this. My, the lame-o lame line of dialogue of the week goes to Black Panther in the Avengers book where he says, you've been chasing the dawn from sea to shining sea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a lame award for dialogue yeah. this week. Thanks, cheers. I, I quite liked the band there. I was like, well, you know, it's like a nice little nod to like all the different variants of the book that's going out. Right. Of none of them are incredible, but you know. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, but anyway, I thought I thought this book worked. I, I like Sam as Cap. Um, you know, I, I just I don't know if I could ever actually call him Captain America and not Falcon. That's that's my mental thing. But I see where they're going, and I love the fact. I love that they gave him that shield that's more like more like red, more like blue than red. Mm. Um, and it has the uh, the symbol. The star has actually like a little bird there so i kind of like um i kind of like the design i'm interested in seeing this the uh the new book and i uh, and to have two captain america books going at the same time pretty cool you know and that's what, what, what the book's for isn't it the it, it story, is it's it's the books, it's, the books when it, the book's doing its job i love the double spread the double page cover by alex mm. ross even though none of these characters appear in the book but uh, yeah. uh i mean i love the i love all the uh the captain america centric characters um lucas what did you think of the book so you know anytime you have a big 30 foot phallus symbol freaking coming out of the freaking ground you know it freaking piques my interest right <laughs> um, you know because because i because i because uh, i like rockets you know not that it was oh, purple yeah yeah nice change up the... you said that really, really. yeah i like phallic, i mean rockets yeah, yeah. <laughs> um look so I see where you guys are coming, but once again, because of the way my brain works, I think of something else. And you know, this is a Captain America book. Um, I look at the propaganda. This is not bad propaganda. It's just the propaganda behind it. Where are they going going with this, right? Um, and Zola and his history of being a German propagandist and Nazi sympathizer, not yada yada yada. You know, I had to look a little bit deeper into it. I looked at hey where is he so for instance there was three elements right he had all these weapons right he had a new robotic system that he like actually it was like seven or eight fucking robotic systems by the time he got freaking done um and then he had this new freaking rocket so the our common enemy right now that has that is currently work, looking into all these robotic systems that would be china right they're a great there's currently a great power competition going on and the ones that are looking into robotic systems and ai that would be china the, and you're like oh uh, look you're looking too much into it well the if you look at the pacific design of the rocket that is a rocket design that is the long mark 2e specifically with the shaft and everything and the freaking rocket boosters and everything that is specifically a freaking china design so i think that's what where, where they were going with this you know like hey this is what happens when you just have a freaking rogue country just just willy-nilly and then in the and then at the end they're they're implementing wakanda in this or elements of wakanda in this and then in the meantime on the other side you know you have captain america who's doing this for you know the ideology and then you know, you got the, and then in the meantime, he's thinking about all the people that are depending on him, you know, the, all, all the other different Captain Americas that are, you know, implemented freaking all around, you know, around the country. And, and you know, what was more, more interesting and that I freaking, when I think about it that way is there was a conversation in between uh, Sam and Zola and Zola's like, and Sam's like, I'm here to fight for America. And Zola goes, Oh, the one that throws a whole bunch of people in prison. He didn't even he didn't say black people. He just throws a whole bunch of people in prison. So we know where he was going with that. 
right? Um, and that is a propaganda tactic of China. Once again, they've been even at people at Facebook and you know, and on Instagram and on TikTok, especially, right? Trying to fractionalize us as a freaking country, right? Um, so I thought I thought that was so for me that was that was definitely interesting. And then you go from one conversation, and then you go to the other the conversation where you do see that there are there has to be different Captain Americas to appeal to the different fractions and the different groups around this freaking country. I thought it was absolutely it's. That's what they're going for. They that, got me. That, it's, it's freaking that was, the idea. that was the idea of the last meeting, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you got, so you get, once again, you got China. Well, you, well, you got, you're going to have China. Well, I think it's, I think it's more Wakanda. And then you don't go, you don't have Wakanda go directly at Captain America. You have this subgroup, the sub guy, as your main avatar to be the one that's fighting the fight. And that's Armin Zola. And that's exactly what China does as well. So if that's where they were going with this genius, absolute freaking genius. I mean, I mean, you make great points again, but I don't care so much because I'm British. So is that, is that a problem? <laughs> you, you, sh- you should. Well, you should. I'm because... joking. I'm going for the talk. I well, see, that's that's um, well. I mean, that, that's where um, I would appreciate if they brought in Captain Carter, right? Um, brought her in, but I wouldn't know. No, speaking of Captain Carter, was Captain Car- did Captain Carter come out this week? No, Captain Carter didn't come out. It came out like last week or something like that. Right. Um, the, the the only thing that I don't like about Captain Carter right now is that what happened to the Union? Remember that freaking comic book? Uh, was, yeah, yeah. yeah there was there was a full on Avengers team called the Union that just came out two yeah. or three years ago yeah. and it's already gone. Yeah. Why isn't Captain Carter heading off that team? Well, Captain Carter is a uh, alternate reality it's in an alternate universe it's, she's not here in america in uh 616. well i mean because because there's a uh, it's, it's not called shield what i forget what the name of their their uk version of the shield was called or something like that but it should have been called the union it's like strike or something like that yeah it's like instead of, silly. exactly instead of calling it strike it should have been called the union and then when she came comes back, she becomes the head of the uh, of the union. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just, but but I w- I would like to see at some point. You no, know, they freaking ring her in, bring her, bring Captain Carter over to six one six. We can have her meet up with freaking this Captain Carter because all the other stuff that they're doing with Miles Morales and different universes and Gwenverse and Gwen and the other freaking universes. Let's, let's, if you want to get crazy, let's get crazy and let's make it make sense. But, you know, once again, for the propagandist theorist and me, this freaking hit a lot of freaking buttons. So I would, I would urge everybody to go pick up uh, the new Captain America book that's coming out, Symbol of Truth, starring uh, Sam Wilson and Sentinel of Liberty, which is going to be the Steve Rogers iteration. So we're going to have two, get two different Captain America books starting this month. And um, I, for one, can't wait, especially if they're all I, – I wonder if they're going to be all painted art because uh, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, but let's jump into the last. Uh, we're running out of time, so let's jump into our last review. Um, Can I go is... first on this one, please? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Thank Hulk you. Hulk six. Hulk six, written by Donny Cates, uh, art by Ryan Otley, inks by Cliff Rathburn, colors by Frank Martin, letters by VCs Corey Pettis. I'm going to borrow from Freya, who's one of the hosts on TDC, the Defense Crusade, um, and she always says when she hates a book. She says something along the lines like, hey, the colours look good. And it's true. The colours do look good. I'll tell you where I got off on this book, where I dropped, where I dropped straight off. I'm all right with the Hulk having three umpteen different personalities. But then you turn one into a spaceship. Shut up. Close the book. Throw it away. Go and buy something else that's more enjoyable than this. <laughs> Creating a spaceship out of a body. Come on. Give your heads a shake. If this is the best you can do with the Hulk, oh, I'm done with this book. There you go. <laughs> Lucas, <laughs> right? So I, I absolutely agree, but you know it, it's, it's supposed to follow along with the metaphor. Like, hey, wh- how do you manage your anger? Well, my anger is like I'm driving a car, and then the bad me is sitting in the back. But when I freaking when I come along certain freaking parts of the road, 
I slip in the back and the bat me freaking takes freaking takes the freaking wheel and he's the one that's freaking driving. That's that's what space the whole spaceship thing is gonna be. But then you are, but the thing is now they're jumping from well, it's the bad me that's driving the spaceship to the whole everybody has a little hulk inside of them. I, this is a long way away from last the last volume where you know, in order to have a Hulk, you had to go through the green room. He had to be exposed to different stuff, and now the Hulk has a Hulk. I, guys, you you have a retailer sending out there just one or two hundred that people are, had to spend what five to six hundred freaking dollars for, and that's what you came up with. The Hulk is a Hulk. For shame, Donny Case. For shame. All right, yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna totally pan this book because, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm even trying to take it in as a vacuum. Because I think we were spoiled a little bit with Al Ewing, uh, like just his run ending last year. And I thought that was probably the best iteration of the Hulk that I had read in a, in decades. This one, I, I, I'm totally lost in the story. I have no idea, no interest. Uh, the Hulk is a spaceship. Does not work for me. Um, that the fact that the the the, the more the angrier angrier Hulk is is the fuel that fuels the spaceship. Um, and yeah, to get more anger out of there, they throw uh, a virtual uh, Galactus virtual cosmic beings so to, to to fight the Hulk. I I just think that this is it's it's stupid on a level uh, that I can't explain. Um, <laughs> I'm glad it's not just me. It's that... it's probably we've we've gone from the best writing on the Hulk in decades to the worst, and it's not even close. It's just I I I, I just can't. I don't know what Donny Cates is thinking, but uh, you know, for someone that has su such a great reputation in the Indies, I he, he's here at Marvel and he's given us uh uh he's given us Cosmic Ghost Rider, which is another stupid idea. And this and and Venom, uh, the King in Black, right? So, uh, I, and I think that the King in Black was started started out uh, started out great with with, it... with maybe a great idea, but right. the, the you know as many great ideas do, they don't stick the landing. And I just kind of look back on that story as, uh, uh you wasted all my time on this. Yeah. This is, I mean, we're six issues into this, and I'm I have no more of an idea of what's going on than issue the first page of issue one. I still don't know what's going on in this book, even though I, I can read the cover blurb on page one that recaps the entire series. I read it and I go, that sounds dumb. And then I read the issue and I'm like, well, I, yup, it was dumb. <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly my thought. That first line, the Hulk is a spaceship. I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, I, I, so I, I don't shark know. This... Meat, shark meat jump. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> this story cannot end fast enough for me, and um, I'm kind of I'm kind of ashamed because um, Al, you even got me to love the Hulk, and I'm not like uh, I'm not a huge Hulk fan anyway. And to 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 g come back to this where it's just such it's such a out of left field story that it just makes no sense to me at all. And who knows? And I'm probably not going to do this, but maybe if I go back, like you said about Moon Knight, and maybe just read the the story in its entirety to try mm -hmm. to understand it. Um, I still yeah. and I yeah, I, and I get Lucas where you're coming from. There, everything's like a metaphor for something. But when you when you when the writing is just this, uh, you know, the, it's it, I, I'm not it, getting it, the metaphor. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it used to be it used to be Donny Cates started out really really strong always like would blow you away amazingly in the beginning and then it would taper off at the end and would leave you with a what the f this the whole thing was bad the, it, every single idea was bad in this these whoever freaking gave him the green light on this should probably just hand in their freaking key card on this one. yeah well <laughs> and the, the hulk has a hulk is probably the stupidest idea i've ever heard so because yeah. it because it waters down the hulk right but I want to say a big thank you to Lucas, actually. Lucas is, uh, I have been privy to a little bit of information. I have got a copy of The Amazing Spider-Man number one uh, for an advanced Ooh. review for Comic Crusaders. So that'll be up right now when this goes air. But Lucas, you've helped me out with that. Just want to say thanks, buddy. 
appreciate that a lot. Cheers. Okay, I guess I'll have to read it to figure out what's going on. <laughs> uh-huh. you know. so can't talk about it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode of No Prize Podcast. And uh, join us uh, in a couple of weeks, and we will be uh, we will be back, and we'll be raging into May. And, Yay! Uh, that's not meant to fall for Aunt May, by the way. Just just want to clear that up. Th- that's yeah. going to be the seventh issue of Hulk. <laughs> 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 All right, on that Aunt May smash. <laughs> oh no, smash! Oh, don't smash Aunt May, Hulk. No. All right, we will see you in a couple of weeks. Enjoy. Adios.